Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Mac Pandit Learning Hub. In the last session, we talked about the Kirchbeck criteria to calculate the degrees of freedom of a mechanism. We also saw certain special cases such as redundant link, redundant kinematic pair, and redundant degree of freedom, where the Kirchbeck criteria failed to produce correct results. In those cases, we suitably modified the Kirchbeck criteria to calculate the degrees of freedom. In this session, we will take up certain numerical problems and we will see how can we use the Kirchbeck criteria to calculate the degrees of freedom of a mechanism. So before that, let's see the steps which are required to calculate the degree of freedom of a mechanism. So obviously, the first step is to draw the kinematic diagram of the actual system. The second step is to count the number of lower pairs with single degree of freedom in the kinematic diagram. The third step is to count the number of higher pairs. The fourth step is to check for redundant links and redundant kinematic pairs. The fifth step is to count the number of redundant degrees of freedom. The sixth step is finally to use the Kirchbeck equation to solve for degree of freedom. So while solving the numerical problem, we are going to follow these steps in order to calculate the degree of freedom of a mechanism. So let us take the first numerical problem. In the picture, you can see here a car hood hinge mechanism has been shown. Now this hinge mechanism, it helps in smooth opening and closing of the car hood. Now this system is actually shown in this diagram and we will try to figure out the degree of freedom of this car hood hinge mechanism. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, the first step will be to draw the kinematic diagram for this car hood hinge mechanism. So let us see the kinematic diagram for this mechanism. So here if you observe, we have replicated the actual system into a kinematic diagram and then we will try to observe the mapping of links in the actual system and in the kinematic diagram. If you observe this portion of the car hood hinge mechanism is basically represented by this solid line in the kinematic diagram. This particular link it is represented by this black line in the kinematic diagram. This particular portion it is represented by this link in the kinematic diagram. Again if you observe carefully this portion of the hinge mechanism it is represented by this yellow link in the kinematic diagram and finally we have another link which is shown here so this link is particularly represented by this solid line in the kinematic diagram now once the kinematic diagram of this hinge mechanism is complete now let us see how can we calculate the degree of freedom for this mechanism to calculate the degree of freedom of this mechanism, we will first start with counting the number of links in the mechanism. So for that purpose, we will start naming the links one by one. So we will start with the fixed link first. Let us name this fixed link as link 1. This is a usual convention to name the fixed link as link 1. So wherever you see a fixed link in this kinematic diagram, you name that link as link 1. Now let us name this link as link 2, then let us name this link as link 3, let us denote this link as link 4, and let us denote this link as link 5, and then let us denote this link as link 6. So now if you observe here, the total number of links in the mechanism is equal to 6. Now the next thing, we will start to count the number of lower pairs in the mechanism. So Again, we will start with the lower pair which is close to the fixed link. So let us call this lower pair as 1R 
then let us go to this this will be counted as 2r then let us go to this this will be counted as 3r then this one 4r then this one 5r then this one 6r and then finally this one 7r now if you observe carefully all the kinematic pairs which i have shown here are revolute pairs and all the revolute pairs are binary in nature so the total number of lower pairs in the mechanism they will become equal to 7 now to calculate the degree of freedom we will simply invoke the kutchback criteria so the degree of freedom it will become equal to 3 6 minus 1 minus 2 multiplied by 7 so the degree of freedom it will become equal to 1 so now you can see here if you turn the input link through a specific angle the output link that will also turn through a definite angle so there is a unique relationship between the motion of the input link which can be considered as link 2 in this case and the motion of output link which can be considered as link 5 in this case so if you observe this mechanism is basically a constrained mechanism so when we say that this mechanism is a constrained mechanism that means the motion between two kinematic pairs in this mechanism is a completely constrained motion with this i would like to conclude this session and hope to see you in the next session where we will be talking about another numerical problem